day everybody and welcome to the January edition of the Fit Paddler. In this edition we talk with a very special guest. His name is Dean Gardner. Dean of course has been paddling around the world for many years. He's one of the great icons in the sport and also runs some of the greatest events that we all get to enjoy around the world in paddling these days. In the interview with Dean we talk about the upcoming Mandura Challenge and also the Doctor which will both be running in the next couple of weekends. We also get to chat with Dean about a number of his personal issues in regard to paddling, how he got involved in the sport, what are the big ticket items he thinks in order to be able to be a good performer in downwind racing. And then of course we finish off chatting to the nine time champion about what Molokai means to him, why he first got involved in the race and what's made him successful to win the event. That's only second to Oscar Chilovsky by winning the race nine times. Um, Dean highlights a number of issues for especially a lot of the first timers that he believes are important to prepare for the race and uh, it will certainly help you quite a lot in connection with the 16 week Molokai program that uh, we've just released that kicks off on the 27th of January. So I hope you enjoy and uh, we look forward to seeing you in Hawaii on May 18 this year. All the best. Bye. <laughs> Okay, Dino, well, um, thanks very much for your time. Of course, uh, we've been, uh, you know, friends for many, many years, and certainly uh, that all started by competing against each other. And as we've moved on through our careers, uh, you've been now running events for a, a number of years. But uh, can you tell us a little bit about this year's race and about the Doctor itself to kick things off? Um, how long has the Doctor been going now? Doctor's been going now for about 10 years. Uh, initially, we started it as a coastal race, but um, the attraction of doing an event from Rottnest into the mainland was too big. And um, being that the wind blows in exactly the right direction, we ended up running it from, from Rottnest into the mainland and have been doing that now for about eight years. And um, it's just the most you know, ideal course for a downwind race. It certainly is. I've, I've been in the event a, a few times and uh, certainly when the wind blows, which is quite, as you said, quite consistent, it's one heck of a lot of fun. But um, what do you think, uh, what's the important factor in regard to ocean ski racing? Why do you think we need to go from one land mass to another? I certainly have my opinions why I think it's uh, very important for the sport, but what's your thinking behind doing that? Well, I, I believe, and I think as you do, it's the heritage of the sport. You know, it, it's, it's what created these these types of events was, I guess, if you want to look way back, it was the way uh, the world was populated. Well, especially the Pacific was populated, and um, you know, doing it on on craft that have the ability to 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 link ocean chop and 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 utilise the the water the way the way the craft that we have do, then uh, you know, it's just a, it's just a fantastic concept, and I think. I think, you know, there's a mountain of events out there that have the ability to go around in circles or go backwards and forwards in, in flat conditions, but the ideal scenario, and and you can see it in the growth of the sport, is to race downwind and, and really enjoy what you're doing. Yeah, I agree, and we'll certainly come back to touch on that a minute when we ask a, a question in a couple of weeks. Um, what do you think uh, about this year's race? So what's the event shaping up like? How, how many people look like uh, being entered, do you think, will start? And what sort of uh, top line competitiveness will be there? Yeah, well, at this stage, I think we're on course for about 350 paddlers. Um, ideally, I'd like to see close to 400. We've had growth every year in this event. Uh, last year, I think we had about 330 on the line. Um, Adding the stand-up paddle boards to the to the to the race has been has been good. Uh, it adds another facet to the event, but traditionally, it's, or, or at the moment, it's still predominantly surf skis and um, uh, you know conditions. And uh, like I've been in Perth now for a th uh, two or three weeks, and um, the pattern is looking ideal for this year's event. And um, I hate hate to put a put a mocker on it, but uh, it looks like it should all come in into place. So. Um, but yeah, I, I would expect somewhere around the 350 mark this year. Of the top guys, you know, you're going to have the top Aussie guys, the Bruce Taylors, Jeremy Cotter, um, Michael Booth, all those sorts of guys, plus the um, the Mockies from South Africa. We have a number of um, European guys this year, guys from New Zealand, Hong Kong, Tahiti. Um, so it's a really good spread of competitors. Right. Okay. Okay. Good. Well, I mean, it's certainly uh, out of you know all the downwind condition races I've ever competed in Australia. It has by far the best 
you know, certainly primarily because of the, the distance between two land masses and it really generates that, that doctor breeze to help you get across the channel, which is a heck of a lot more fun than 40 degrees dead flat like uh, I paddled at one other time. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Yeah, well, let's hope, mate, because uh, there's no fun in, in, in paddling on the flat. And as I said, there's a there's a mountain of races that give you the ability to be able to do that. So that's why downwind racing is so unique. And, uh, yeah, obviously the um, the elements are something that we've got to contend with and, and we just try and fit the race in as best we can in the prevailing conditions. So, you know, one year we actually reversed the race where we ran, went to Rottnest because we had strong offshores and it looked like it wasn't going to kick around all day and, and fortunately for us it didn't kick around and uh, we got screaming offshore winds that is as good a course as any over to Rottnest um, and that was a fantastic event as well so you know we, we've, we've tried to set this event up to cater for every possible scenario and um, sometimes <laughs> sometimes it just doesn't happen for you and and as as you witnessed a couple of years ago or uh, you know um, it was it was quite tough so you know, yeah. that happens every now and again, but um, that's part of what makes this event so unique. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Well, um, um, you know, we I'd like to move on to a couple of other bits and pieces. So um, all the best for the race this year and uh, certainly hope everyone has an enjoyable experience and no one um, suffers too much hardship out there in the water. So I hope the, uh, the event's a ripper. Thanks, um, mate. So just a little bit about yourself, because uh, a lot of people have heard of you, but you know, we all sort of do what we do and not many people know a lot about each other. We're in an IT age where it's very easy to find people, but it doesn't mean you really know a lot about people. So I've just got four topics here just to create a, something with a little bit of a difference that I thought people would like to know about you, because you are one of the founders of the sport. Um, you were there in one of the very early years of uh, the race in Hawaii. Um, but before we get on to Hawaii, um, what's your philosophy about paddling? Like, what what made you want to be competitive, and why did you get so keen on going overseas to Hawaii to, which is really where you've made the biggest name for yourself in an event? Um, you know, as a competitor, what moved you to do it? Well, initially, I got in. I got into paddling because I um, I grew up on the beach. I I surfed with all my friends, and and found that growing up in Perth, you you didn't really surf all the time, so. Um, the uh, you know the, the the paddling sort of came up. I, I wasn't super competitive. I just loved just jumping on a ski and going for a paddle and actually doing the exercise and being out on the water. Um, and then uh, as time went by in my late teens, I sort of started racing a little bit and, and joined a, a surf club, a more competitive surf club than the one I was currently in. Um, I still liked going away on my surfing trips and and that sort of stuff, but. I uh, got into paddling via via that. I was a professional fisherman at the time, so I was on the water a fair bit. I was away a lot, so I wasn't still wasn't really competitive and didn't really have the um, the training regime that um, a lot of people have had. Um, so I didn't really start until very late teens, early twenties. Um, did the surf club stuff like yourself, and um, I got really bored with that pretty quickly. Um, not so much the racing. I loved the racing, and and you know, you and I were were there for a lot of finals on the beach in various locations, and it was good, good to have that feeling to have you know to walk down to the beach on a Sunday and be of one of only twelve skis on the beach. That was a pretty good feeling, and I loved all that stuff at the national titles. Um, but once again, I got bored with that. I found there was too much there was too much other stuff involved in in that side of thing, and. Um, I looked elsewhere and, um, you know, I'd heard about Grant Kenny, you know, going over as a 16 year old and winning this mythical race in Hawaii and that sort of grabbed my attention. I love to travel. I love to um, be out on the ocean and, and um, so, I, you know, I went over there my first year and um, from there it sort of just grew. At that stage I still wasn't super competitive in the event, you know, I got a couple of places here and there but it took a, a couple of years before I actually won it. and then. I found that that was my real passion. I, I, it was the one thing that um, I felt like I, I knew that I could do pretty well, and that's being out in the middle of the ocean and catching, catching chop. You know, if if, yeah. if it's the only thing that I'm good at in my life, well, I'm I'm sort of happy happy about that because <laughs> it's been good fun. So, um, you know, if you get to paddle in big downwind conditions for three hours across the channel, then um, you know, for me, that's heaven. So. And you know we've had a few heavens out there over the years, and and I've been lucky. It's kept me involved, and I think 
that's what's really important about this sport is is to keep to keep involved in it and the only way that's going to happen is is uh you know producing conditions that that people want to be in and um the days of bashing into a headwind for 60k and and making it the world's toughest race just just doesn't exist and that's reflected in the numbers that actually do those races you know and the growth really is in the downwind racing yeah i agree entirely um certainly as you get older the body doesn't enjoy uh, being flogged to death and training for events like that are very difficult as well so um, look there's been no doubt um, and you know a lot of people would question who's the greatest downwind paddler in the world a lot of um, characteristics come into downwind paddling as you're aware you know being able to read oceans and understand change and currents and where the wind's coming from and how you position skis and all those things that make a great downwind paddler but out of all the people that I've raced against you know Oscar has certainly got a fantastic record in Hawaii um, you certainly are not that far behind him in number of wins, being nine total uh, championship wins over there. And out of you guys that you know who I've raced against and trained against, Grant Kenny's, who are the three most successful guys that have crossed the channel in number of wins. Um, I would say, like while Oscar's got that little bit more power, and Grant's had that more sort of you know sprint paddling background, where he's had that faster twitch speed as well. You've tended to do a little better in actually reading the ocean without having those high horsepower veins that they've had in their body to be able to consistently be there and not only win it nine times but the amount of times you've been there you know leading the race or within a hundred meters of leading the race when you get to that last port lock point um, quite clearly illustrates that um, you've probably got what one of the best abilities to read the ocean out of anybody so what do you think or what is your priority what could you tell people um, that is a key factor in order to be able to be good at downwind and cross Molokai doing quite well for three to five hours. Yeah, well, firstly, you've got to know how to paddle. Um, you know, that's that's probably pretty crucial. And then I think it's just a matter of, to me, it, it's just a matter of perseverance. And how I, how I learnt to paddle downwind was um, I, um, I was in a surf club called Floret and I used to go down the coast from Floret on a you know windy Sunday afternoon, uh, um, they'd throw my ski on, and I was a 13 or 14 year old, and we'd paddle out to sea for two or three k, and then head back straight into Floriet, you know, and that's how I learned. I'd be coming off the whole time, you know, but um, you've got to be really confident on your craft and, and have the ability to get back on your craft and persevere with those sorts of conditions. But ultimately, you know, you get yourself in 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 a position where it's just so much fun, you know, and that's, um, I think with everything, that's the key is, is you've got to enjoy it. And it might take a little bit of time to get to that point, but, um, I think perseverance and, and just, you know, finding a, finding that happy place is, is really, really important. You know, I, I don't consider myself a, um, a, uh, a, a, a lead athlete or anything like that. I'm just someone that enjoys paddling in the ocean and, and, um, you know, for me, it, it, it's it's uh, transferred nicely into racing because it's something that I enjoy, and and um, you know, I'm I'm pretty lucky there that you can you can you can do that. You, I think you know you have to still do a few grinds and a um, a bit of hard stuff, and and obviously get your paddling ability up. But you know, you just have to look at my technique to know that I'm not I'm not really a, a top paddler. You know, I um. I just managed to be able to, I don't know, put things together at the right time and, and uh, I think that's really important. Okay, well um, just very, very briefly, Dean Garden is an hour and a half, two hours into Molokai in 2014 if the wind's up and he chooses to do the race, which everyone knows that's when you turn up and like to do it. Um, what is a thought that's going through your head, forgetting about the competitors but just working with the conditions themselves, what is something that you try and focus on doing? that some of the people that might be listening to uh, to your interview today might be able to take from what you're concentrating on about an hour and a half, two hours into the race. Okay, I'll break that down because there's a big difference to me in the hour, hour to the uh, two hour and then the two hour to the three hour. So in the first hour, in the first hour up to the first hour, it's just about um, getting everything into sync and just trying to conserve um, as much energy as possible and, and making sure you're, you're on track with a, with a good course um, and keeping that in mind the whole time. And then the, uh, one to two hours is 
still conserving as best you can and and um now you should you should be in unison and, and, and in the swing of the ocean and being able to work the runs left and right. And then three, you know, two to three becomes, that's when the race really starts, you know, and, and that's when I'd look over and see you on my left side and, and know that Oscar's, <laughs> Oscar's um, you know, 400 metres behind us and bearing down on us and, um, you know, whoever else is in the race, Tim Jacobs, Lewis Loughlin or whoever, they're all there too. So uh, that's when I, I start to think about those guys and, and why they why I'm either moving away from them or they're getting closer to me and and working out uh making sure that you know my direction's still the direction I want to be going and and um you know two and a half hours is when you've really got to kick I think and and um if you kick at two and a half hours and and, and survive and that's anything from 245 through to 330 uh that's the survival phase so um if you've conserved enough in those first two hours then you might have enough to charge through portlock and and paddle into the headwind for that last 2k so you know it, it's um I, I pretty well unleash everything before i get to portlock so yep um and then hopefully i can survive the rest of the way so <laughs> that's right as we get older that gets harder <laughs> yeah yeah um, okay, a couple of quickies very briefly. Um, the greatest race uh, you've ever had in Hawaii, what year was that and just briefly why? Uh, probably for me, um, I'm going to give you two. Um, the, the, the race that um, a couple of years ago when you and myself and Oscar were at Portlock Point together, I thought was a really good race. Yep. Um, I think we all did the best we possibly could and... and um, and uh, you know it showed in in three guys hitting port lock within such a short space of time. I think that was an amazing event. But for me personally, and and the win uh, from a winning perspective was a race that I did. Uh, Lewis Laughlin and I. It was very 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 calm conditions, a light tailwind. I'd been in South Africa the week before, pulled out of a race because it was flat. Had basically said I wasn't going to Molokai. Got home. I uh, realised that I wanted to go to Molokai on a Thursday or Friday. Flew to Hawaii. Um, rolled up at uh, Molokai, slept on the beach, um, and then woke up in the morning to the boats facing towards Oahu like they do sometimes. Uh, the boat's on anchor, so it meant the wind was, was slight head, but then it, the boat swung and a little bit of um, east wind started to kick in, probably around eight to 12 knots. And I said to my friend who I was camping with at the time, um, I'm not gonna start. And then about half an hour out from the race, it picked up a little bit more to just where you could see a white cap around the corner. And I started, it, it backed off, it picked up, it backed off the whole way across the channel. And Lewis and I were within 10 metres of each other the whole way across the channel. Um, half an hour to go, I virtually gave up. Um, then I had a kick, my boys on the boat yelled at me, I had a kick again, went past Lewis. He um, he sort of faded a bit, then he fell off. He struggled to get back on for a while, which gave me a bit of a lead. I ran around Portlock. I was that buggered that I caught the first wave I could, ended up on the rocks, had to run across the rocks with my ski, um, took my fair bit of my rudder out, um, and then Lewis was at me again, and we raced into the finish line. I just managed to get him. So from a race perspective, that was my best race. Yeah, certainly a lot of... Uh mental questions pre, pre-race and during the race to end up with the victory, uh, it, it's, it's quite a story in itself, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and it was, uh, it was a, a, you know, a, you know I, was, I was proud of myself, let's say yep. that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So um, just in no more than 10 words per answer for these particular questions, just to do with Molokai, um, yep. the first race you started in Hawaii, your first year? 89. 89, beautiful. Um, the what you think is uh, the uniqueness about Hawaii? Why is it the big draw card? It's a crossing. It um, it the wind funnels. It has a lot of variables with regards to current, wind, and swell, um, and attracts good field. I guess they're the keys. Is it the biggest paddling challenge? Well, I think there's bigger paddling challenges. Right. Um, it's 
the the biggest downwind paddling challenge. Okay. Um, is it the best course? Is it the best downwind course? Probably from a um, technical point of view, no, uh, because you do have to do a lot of cutting back, which I I like, but um, it's very, very close to being one of the best, yep. Okay. Um, the key ingredient to do well in Hawaii? Um, s- well, I guess stamina and desire. Yep, yep, I agree entirely. Um, the, your top or five important things or your top five on, on, a, che- on a Dean Gardner checklist, if you could prepare best for Molokai, this is for our first time races, so the people that haven't done the event before, what is five items that you would advise them to make sure they've ticked off before leaving? Mm. Uh, done some downwind, or a fair bit of downwind, at, at least a couple of, you know, two and a half, three hour paddles, whether that be races or training. Um, I don't have a huge amount of stuff that I follow. Um, And a a fair bit of speed, speed sort of training too. It's, it's not a, it's not a paddle grind. It's a, it's a bunch of little spurts and you've got to be competent with that, you know, otherwise it becomes miserable. Okay. Yep. Beautiful. Um, I want to mention three names to you, and I want you to just tell me one word of those people, or that it best describes them from your perspective. You know yep. him a long time, Oscar. Amazing. Um, he's probably one of the greatest water feeling athletes, and certainly one of the most successful Ironmen I regard of all time, um, Grant Kenny. Uh, um highly skilled sorry two words there okay and <laughs> lewis lachlan an animal <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay mate well um thanks very much for your time all the very best for uh the race coming up uh over all the two events coming up that you're running over the next two weekends and uh you know i certainly hope that this has um, enlightened quite a few paddlers not only about yourself but um the event coming up in the next couple of weeks and molokai on its way again in 2014. yeah thanks clint thanks for your time no worries buddy thanks a lot